This is the journey to Venus. Flying towards the sun to reach the floating Venus cloud colony. Living in the clouds where the skies are yellow. The launch window to Venus opens every one year and seven months compared to the launch window of Mars, which is every two years and two months. But what does the journey to the yellow planet look like? Does the sun's gravity pull the ship faster towards Venus? What protects the spaceship when entering the acidic atmosphere? And what keeps the colony floating in the clouds of Venus? There are 87 passengers on board the fusion engine Venus planet ship. It will reach the floating cloud colony in one month's time. And the journey starts now. The spacecraft launches from the surface of Earth, leaving behind the blue skies for the yellow clouds of Venus. Once in orbit, the second stage fusion drive takes over for the journey through space. The spaceship accelerates, creating 0.05 g of continuous thrust. The passengers are on their way to Venus. The thrust generates 5% artificial gravity, pushing down towards the engines. Objects do not float as they would in zero-g, but they fall very slowly, taking several seconds to drift to the floor, 20 times slower than on Earth. The passengers use magnetic boots to walk around, and sleeping requires wearing straps. A number of passengers have brought personal gravity tokens, a small, sentimental object such as a ring or ornament. They watch the item fall slowly, and when they reach Venus, their tokens will start to fall differently. And as the passengers fly to Venus, the spaceship spins slowly, doing a barbecue roll to evenly distribute the heat coming from the sun and preventing hot spots from developing. The spaceship completes one to three barbecue roll rotations per hour based on thermal readings, rotating more frequently as it approaches Venus. Engineered filters in the windows allow the passengers to safely look out of the observation deck. Earth appears as a shrinking blue marble, and the sun dominates the view ahead. The Venus planet ship is flying through the inner solar system. At the halfway mark, 15 days into the journey, the ship will perform a 180-degree flip and then fire its engines to decelerate. Through the observation windows, the passengers can now see Mercury. It is a bright point of light against the star field. Venus is still not visible, hidden in the sun's glare. Communications with Earth has become challenging. Solar interference creates communication blackouts as charged particles from the sun disrupt radio signals. The ship's communications deck must precisely point antennas and employs automated message repetition to maintain reliable contact with Earth. Uh, a number of the passengers are now dreaming in low gravity. They are floating, flying, and leaping great distances. These dreams feel more vivid and realistic than when on Earth. Some dream of being on Earth and feeling the heavy gravity. At 5% thrust gravity, people are noticing their taste buds are reacting differently. As the fluids shift in their bodies, salty flavors feel muted. They experiment with spice packets from the galley and trading recipes like Venusian curry. The medical staff have been monitoring and examining each passenger since day one. The 5% artificial gravity environment on board the spaceship requires careful management of passenger health. At 1 20th of Earth gravity, the body experiences decreased bone loading, lower cardiovascular demand, and reduced muscle tone, which is the decreased tension and readiness in muscles while fluid distribution and blood circulation are also altered, as well as proprioception, which is the body's sense of position. The passengers must complete three hours of daily exercise, and they undergo regular examinations by the medical staff, as the collected data helps predict each passenger's readaptation needs when arriving at the Venus Cloud Colony, which has 89% of Earth's gravity. The 87 passengers are a third of the way to their destination, the floating Venus Cloud Colony. 
In their free time, passengers use virtual reality headsets in their cabins. Others share food from their homelands and exchange stories of their adventures across the solar system, from lunar outposts to orbiting space stations and the distant red soil of Mars. A number of the scientists spend their days testing genetically engineered space crops. They are optimizing seed modifications for growing in low-gravity, space-journey environments. While the engineers work on design plans for colony expansion, they are designing larger biodome platforms and advanced space drones that will seed the clouds to redirect dangerous turbulence around the colony. As the Venus planet ship travels closer to the Sun, the onboard navigation computers adjust the flight path based on the stronger solar gravity pulling the ship inward and the increased solar radiation pressure pushing outward. These changes are added to the original flight path, taking into account the original launch window and the fact that Venus orbits the Sun faster than Earth. It takes only 225 Earth days for Venus to orbit the Sun, and Venus spins slowly, taking 243 Earth days to complete one rotation. So a day on Venus is longer than its year. The cloud colony is carried along by Venus's super-rotating atmosphere. The atmosphere moves much faster than the planet, circling every four Earth days. This means the colonists experience a single day and night cycle of 48 hours of daylight, followed by 48 hours of darkness, and they see the sun rise in the west and set in the east. On board the Venus planet ship, artificial lighting creates day-night cycles that mimic Earth's 24-hour rhythm, cycling through sunrises and sunsets, helping to maintain circadian rhythms against the backdrop of endless space. On the observation deck, passengers can watch live feeds of the Venus atmosphere displayed across the domed ceiling, with the projected flight path updating in real time. There are also virtual astronomy guides to help passengers identify celestial objects as they look out of the observation deck windows. They can also access live feeds from the ship-mounted telescope for deep space viewing as well as feeds from satellites positioned throughout the solar system. A small group of passengers are playing the resource board game where players are merchants, trading goods through different solar system trade routes. The passengers are nearing the halfway mark of their journey. Soon, it will be time to flip and burn. The Venus planet ship is reaching day 15, the halfway mark, and is preparing for deceleration. All loose items are secured. The engines cut out and spin thrusters slowly rotate the spaceship. The passengers experience 30 minutes of zero gravity during the flip. Everyone gathers for a communal flip day meal, eaten upside down from their previous orientation. Looking out the windows, Earth has shrunk to a bright star-like point. Venus is visible. It is a white crescent that grows larger and thinner each day. The spaceship has completed its flip, rotating 180 degrees, pointing its engines towards Venus. The engines fire up. This marks the beginning of the deceleration phase of the ship's journey to Venus. The communications delay with Earth has reached 1.1 minute one way. The 5% thrust gravity has returned after the flip maneuver, still pulling down towards the engines as the ship travels backwards, the thrusters burning to slow down the rocket as it continues its journey to Venus. First-timers to the floating colony are using VR goggles to walk through a virtual simulation in real time of the colony. And the onboard veterans teach them about life in the clouds. They learn about the slang that is only used at the Venus cloud colony. And they hear about the myth of the haloed gates, where rings of light in the sky are believed to mark the passage to an ancient, advanced Venusian civilization. When the spaceship arrives at Venus, a number of the passengers will join the ranks of the Tri-World Explorers, having set foot on Earth, the Moon, and Mars. One of the onboard doctors left a position on the Mars medical team to study how future children born in the yellow skies of the cloud colony will physically change and evolve across generations. And a group of young construction workers who are playing cards in the galley laugh about their experiences of building structures on three worlds and debate whether Venus's floating platforms will be their greatest challenge yet. 
A few of the veterans are playing a prank on the first-timers, handing them smelling salts and telling them that is what the sulfuric acid on Venus smells like, even though not true. <laughs> when the passengers arrive at the colony, they will be living on large, connected, floating platforms. Inside these interconnected aerial habitats, transparent sky bridges link research labs, biodome gardens, and living quarters, all suspended 55 kilometers, 34 miles, above the surface of Venus with Earth-like atmospheric pressure and temperatures. The colony floats above the most intense of sulfuric acid clouds and hellish surface below, and is shielded from solar radiation by thick clouds above and the gravity of the colony is 89% of Earth's, compared to the negative long-term health effects of Mars's 38%. Venus's thick carbon dioxide atmosphere is so dense, about 65 times denser than Earth's, that breathable air of nitrogen and oxygen acts as a lifting gas, making it easier to float large structures and build floating cloud cities. Additional lifting chambers filled with lighter gases, such as hydrogen, are needed to achieve enough buoyancy. The Venus floating colony has built-in, internal hydrogen-filled chambers that are located in the upper hull with the habitation areas below. There are 1,872 people on board the floating Venus cloud colony. Venus appears as a thin crescent, as the sunlight hits it at an angle, revealing more of the shadowed side. The passengers can see the planet's white cloud layers and the day-night terminator line. Heat management has become critical. The VP7's cooling systems are dealing with both the waste heat from the fusion drive and the growing intensity of solar radiation. As the spacecraft continues traveling towards the sun, the solar radiation increases following the inverse square of the distance. This means that when you have the distance to the sun, the radiation becomes four times stronger. In orbit around Venus, the solar intensity is roughly 1.9 times what it is at Earth. The spacecraft is equipped with cooling systems and layered with radiation-reflecting materials to handle the increasing solar radiation and fusion drive heat as it travels towards the sun, and heat shields with acid-resistant outer coatings on all exposed surfaces will protect the spacecraft against the sulfuric acid droplets in the clouds of Venus. The Venus Planet Ship is a hybrid wingship with deployable winglets, control surfaces, and docking thrusters for stability and maneuverability when flying through the thick atmosphere of Venus. The spacecraft is also designed as a mobile platform for exploring Venus's atmosphere. The VP-7 will be docking at one of the colony's dedicated docking structures with built-in buoyancy support and counterbalance systems. The passengers are preparing for the orbital insertion burn. The spaceship is still flying backwards, with its engines firing to slow it down. During the final approach, the passengers remain in the inner shielded compartments. The view windows are sealed shut to protect against the compressive heating generated when the spacecraft enters the atmosphere. The engines turn off. Spin thrusters rotate the spaceship 180 degrees. The VP-7 is now facing forward and begins the orbital insertion burn. The main engines fire up and perform an angled burn to enter a clockwise orbit around Venus. This angled burn converts the straight-line trajectory into a curved orbital path. The spaceship is now in orbit around Venus and begins to descend into the upper atmosphere. Retractable control surfaces and fins deploy, providing navigation in the dense atmosphere of Venus. The spaceship continues making adjustments and matching the altitude and speed to intercept the floating colony in the next two days. The seatbelt signs have turned off. The passengers have arrived at Venus. Looking out of the now unshielded windows, the passengers see a thick yellow and orange fog. Through the sulfuric acid haze, the passengers catch glimpses of fast-moving cloud formations. They are driven by super-rotating winds, a display of Venus's meteorological activity. The formations create a sea of swirling clouds with dark streaks and complex patterns and textures. 
Looking down, the passengers can see the lower cloud layers, and through breaks in the clouds, there are shadowy outlines of the rocky Venusian surface far below. And looking away from the sun, towards the shadow of the spacecraft, the passengers witness a glory. It is a Venusian rainbow of nested rings of light caused by sunlight striking the highly reflective, acidic droplets swirling in the clouds. After a month of living with 5% artificial gravity, the passengers will need several days to adjust to the floating colony's gravity level of 89%. The medical team performs final health tests. Soon, the spaceship will reach the floating cloud colony. As the Venus planet ship nears the floating colony, the passengers see the silhouetted structure emerging from the yellow fog. There are also sightings of other spacecraft involved in logistical operations and scientific missions around the colony. And rising from the colony platform, the passengers see for the first time the blurry shapes of the energy towers. The tower's solar panels collect the solar energy that is much more intense even through the clouds than on Earth due to Venus being closer to the Sun. And wind turbines harness the high wind speeds of the super-rotating atmosphere. These energy towers support the baseline power of the colony's onboard fusion reactors. Looking through the fog, the view of the colony becomes clearer, appearing as interconnected platforms and structures floating in the Venusian atmosphere. The VP-7 is on its final approach, heading towards the docking platform. The spaceship has tapped into the cloud colony's network of high-altitude relay satellites that provide continuous communication using radio waves in frequency ranges that minimize interference in the thick atmosphere. The spaceship initiates the docking procedure. The onboard computers monitor the atmospheric currents, thermal variations, and match the colony's drift in Venus's winds. The Venus Planet Ship 7 has started the docking approach at a slightly lower orbital velocity to slowly catch up with the colony. This method reduces the risk of collision. In Venus's dynamic, super-rotating atmosphere, this is a complex maneuver. The docking structure, just like the colony, uses hydrogen-filled chambers in the upper hull with the docking facilities below, providing a stable platform for Earth ships to dock. Stabilizing systems and counterbalancing mechanisms are in place to handle the ship's mass. Small thrusters and adjustable gas tank chambers will counteract the weight of the docked spaceship. The Venus planet ship has docked. The engines cut out. A pressurized sleeve pushes forward, connecting with the spaceship. The 87 passengers have completed their journey towards the sun joining the 1,872 inhabitants on the floating Venus cloud colony. The passengers look out of the colony's windows and watch the sunset-like glow of the Venusian atmosphere, while below, Venus's true surface remains hidden beneath a sea of clouds. What happens next? The first 10,000 days on Venus. The third volume of the Encyclopedia of the Future is now available on Patreon.